right guys welcome back i've been remiss in my manners here sorry i was trying to record um last week for episode four but wi-fi has been a little iffy here so but we are back with episode five of season seven game of thrones and it is uh <laughs> east watch um which is fun because that's where we go at the end of all of this so i'm not gonna spend a lot of time i'm gonna try to make this a little bit quick so i do have my notes basically let's just start let's just do it so we open up you know at the little lake there where we left off um episode four was great you know we got a lot of what we wanted to see which was drogon be a dragon drogon fire and shit you know i thought we lost him for a second but we did it like f you brawn for almost doing that but it was kind of like dang who should we go for because we like brawn and we like jamie but we also don't want Danny to lose. But Danny's getting a little, she getting to be too much. But anyway, let's just move along here. So it is uh, confirmed that Bron is the one that actually um, throws his body into saving Jamie and dumping them both in that little water there, uh, saving both of their lives from the fucking hard ass dragon fire. That fire is vicious. It was just like, Deci like just kill all of them, decimating everybody, turning them into ash within fucking seconds, moments of being exposed to dragon fire. It must be pretty damn potent, that Dracaris dragon fire. So anyway, get them having their little chat. Bron is telling Jamie, you know, you don't die until I get my money. Until I get my money, Stay your ass alive. Don't try to go on a fucking suicide mission, you dumbass. Which I'm sure everyone was thinking. And then we also have Tyrion, you know, looking over the lay of the land. The devastation that was just <sighs> immense. It's crazy. All those bodies. But, you know, this is war. This is what happens. We get, now we have Drogon, you know, perched on that rock like, like a little dragon king and he just looks so majestic i loved it and then you know obviously danny goes into her little spiel about how she doesn't want to kill people that's not what she wanted to do and you know she knows what cersei's told them you know which is that she is you know a bad person so she's just trying to let them know like i didn't want this but this is what happens you know and i'm not saying you know a lot who knows <laughs> you know so she just wants them to bend the knee and if they don't bend the knee then they die and i'm just like god you and this bending of the knees girl i'm like not everyone is going to submit to you and that's fine but i guess you have to do what you have to do and so there were some who didn't bend the knee and drogon was like if y'all don't fucking bend your knees right goddamn now <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay fine except for the tarleys which is very sad because you know they got burnt to a crisp like not even a crisp it was just like <laughs> ashes immediately it's fucking sucks you know he didn't he told her before uh randall died randall tarley was just like you're not my queen i'm not going to bow down to you you are a foreign invader so i'd rather just die he was trying to get dick on to bend the knee you know save your house like Tyrion said like a, a whole house has been taken out during this war like let's not have another but Dickon wasn't having it he was like if my father dies I die and they both died kind of uh kind of sucks because it's like a um like a mirror image of what almost it's almost a mirror image of what happened with you know Danny's father and how he burnt Ned's dad and brother well, he burnt the dad. I don't think he, he didn't burn the brother. The brother was choking himself, basically, trying to get to the dad. And, yeah, that sucks. Anyway, then we get Jamie telling Cersei, like, there is no winning this war. Like, 
she used one dragon. You forget, she has two more. And that dragon wiped out that scorpion. Her army is depleted. Like, we don't have as many men no more. So, girl, we're, sister, we're just gonna have to gotta hire something out here because we're 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 dying <laughs> they'd be like you we can't win Cersei, she's not hearing any of it she doesn't care like if they just like as long as danny doesn't have the throne Cersei doesn't care and then that's who she was just uh when jamie and her were talking and she's like you met with Tyrion, knowing what he you know he killed my our father and killed our son and that's when Jamie was like, er, he did not do that. <laughs> it wasn't him. And she was like, okay, well. And that's when he told her it was Lady Olena. And she was like, oh, she seemed like she was upset a little bit by it. But, you know, Lady Olena, gotcha, gotcha. I killed your son and you gave me a poison to soothe my my death to make it a little bit easier on me. And I know Jamie was like, not really seething, but I know Cersei was about that. Like you fucking gave her a goddamn poison I could have tortured her old ass, you son of a bitch. Anyway, I just don't see those two seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. Annie and Drogon make it back to Dragonstone and then we get the moment that I've been waiting for kind of, which is when Drogon and John come face to face. It gave me the goosebumps. It was a very emotional scene for me. Don't ask me why, it just was because they're just like in the moment where John just automatically takes off his glove to touch Drogon. And it's, you could almost see like a connection happening between them. And it was really cool because yeah, no one's gotten that close to Drogon besides Danny. So, I mean, it, it obviously proves our point that John is not, you know, he's not a full-blooded Stark, let's just put it that way. He has the blood of the dragon, and the dragon recognized that in him, and the, like, the, the calmness that came over Drogon when John finally touched him. It was very cute. I liked it. It was a perfect moment. I know Danny liked it because she looked like she did. They look like they like each other more and more every episode. It makes me nervous because I don't see how... A lot of people want it to happen, but I just don't see how it's a good thing. Right now, I just don't. Then Danny brings up the knife in the heart again, and he's not trying to go there. It's like ex nay on the <laughs> heart A. Like, he was just trying to, you know, Davos was just, you know, going a little overboard with his words it's not like that and then we get jora he is back i thought they were gonna have a cute little moment it was not a little hug but you know he's still in the friend zone i kind of feel bad about that for him but not really because it doesn't seem like their romantic connection was there anyway on danny's side um in the book it kind of feels a little more romantic or maybe she just feels like she owes him a little Anyway, I don't want to be one of those people, oh, you're a book reader, because my boyfriend says that a lot when we talk about games. Oh, I'm a book reader. She is a book reader. Hey, let's move on. Hit Bran walking into the crows, surveying what's going on, searching for the Night King. He finds the Night King. Night King sees him, and the crows disperse. <laughs> just like, ah! <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> When he he works out, when he actually when he's pushed out, he tells Macer we need ravens. We need to send a raven to John now. And we get um, Sam Wells cleaning up while the Maesters are talking at you know the Citadel. And they're talking and they're talking and they're talking like they always do. And Sam Will intervenes in their discussion because they were talking about Bran, but they were like talking around his name. They didn't even say his name. Just like the cripple. Blah, 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 blah. His, his name is Brian. Okay. And he was beyond the wall more than anybody else. And he was there longer than anybody else. So, and he managed to survive. So it's not, what he's saying is not 
far-fetched. I've seen the White Walkers. I know what they look like. I've experienced it. He's experienced it. This is a real threat, people. Pay attention. This is real. <laughs> but they don't listen. Mr. Um, Ebros is just like, it's probably a plot from Danny, the Dragon Queen, to get the in our southern army somewhere else so she could take over something else. Like, God, you guys are so, you be so smart. But when Dan, when Samuel leaves, because he's obviously done with, with them, done talking to them, there's no getting used to them because they threaten him with, like, punishment. The, you know, book smart sorts. You're going to be writing some shit. You know, get the hell out of here. Shut up. So he leaves, and that's when they're like, is that the young man who his father and brother was just burnt alive? And I'm like, yeah, good. So y'all wait until he leaves to say that? And then he was like, yeah, I haven't told him yet. Well, don't you think you should tell him? Don't you think that's important? Well, it's too late because... And then we get Varys and Tyrion talking because they're scared. They think Danny is going wayward. And they're trying to reel her in. That's basically what Varys is telling Terry. Like, get her to listen. Bring it on back in. Bring it on. All this, all this dragon fire. We gotta stop. We gotta stop. He talks about the scroll. Varys talks about how, you know, there's a scroll and Tyrion's just asking about it. He was like, it's a scroll for the king. He's like, okay, and yeah, what did it say? I know you read it, sis. On gets the scroll and he's just like, I thought Bran was dead. I thought Arya was dead. And it comes to find out they're not dead, which is, you know, great. But he feels like he needs to get back. And so they're also talking about, like, Tyrion's like, I need to meet with Jamie so I can tell him that this threat is real. We've got to get Cersei to understand and acknowledge that this is real. We need everybody in on this, even if we don't like each other. We can handle that later, but right now we need to take care of this. This is most important because if we don't take care of this, everyone's dead. And that is the truth. Please do it. And so Donald says he's going to smuggle Tyrion in, but you need to hurry up, make it quick. And John and them are volunteering to go beyond the wall and snag one of the whites. Like Danny is just... You know, telling John, like, you, I didn't give you permission to leave. And we know you don't want him to leave because he's so darn cute and you want to keep him around and stare into his morose eyes that look like they're forlorn all the time. You want him to stay around for that. It's, mm -hmm. it's understandable. So, <laughs> but then John's just like, I don't need your permission. I'm a king. I can leave if I want to. What the hell? thought this was I am a king and it looked like it you know turned her on for a second she was like put me in my place all right I trust you be gone do what you gotta do so we get the scene where Arya is looking on as the northern lords are speaking with Sansa about how you know the king in the north should be in the north and that Sansa should be in charge and she's not even saying anything, like, in defense of John. She's saying, like, half-ass shit to kind of make it seem like she's in, you know, she's defending him, but she really wasn't. I think she only said something because Arya was watching. But Arya clocked her teeth when she said, Sansa, like, you want to be in charge. That's why you didn't say anything back to the lords, because you knew that you would need them on your side. You need them to like you, so that if John doesn't happen to come back, you're already in place. So Davos smuggles Tyrion into King's Landing and we get the meeting with Jamie and Tyrion. Very emotional because Tyrion honestly does love Jamie. Like he loves his brother. I mean, obviously he doesn't care for Cersei, but he loves his brother. I feel like Tyrion loved his family, but his family really didn't have the same emotions towards him. At least not Tywin and Cersei. And Jamie was just like, I told Ron, if I ever saw you, I'd cut you in half. And he was like, it's going to be hard to do with that <laughs> training sword. But it was just cute because for a moment you could see that they probably wanted to hash it out and just forget about it. But obviously they're on two different sides. But Tyrion was there to let him know that their threat was real and to tell Cersei, like, we need, everyone needs to come in on this. Everyone. 
we get <laughs> Davos and Flea Bottom. And who do we have? Gendry! Gendry! He's back. We've been waiting for this. Of course, they wait until the season is almost over to give us Gendry, but he's got his father's Warhammer. He's got a Warhammer of his own. And he is going to be wielding that son of a bitch. He's been making weapons for the Lannister army for the men, for the family who killed his father. He sucks balls, but you know. Then we get them leaving and we get some, you know, guards coming. Hey there, what are you doing? Mind your business, people. Go away. What do you care? Is that your boat? Yes, it's my boat. And I'm leaving. I didn't go to the docks for a reason. So he's just showing, Davo shows him the fermented crabs, fermented crabs. Um, I guess they help your libido. And that's what he did. He let them taste it. It was like, okay, so get the fuck out of here. <laughs> go find some whores and put that to use. But then they see Tyrion, because he just happened to come out at the wrong, wrong time. And uh, Gendry already looked like he was over them, so he just smashed them in the head instead of Davos giving them more money to bribe them or more fermented crap. It was just like, let's just get this over with. We gotta go. Jamie walks in on Cersei and Kyburn, and obviously Kyburn's talking to her and asked her, I could give you something for that. Like, you picked like the perfect time to just say that while Jamie's just walking in. Okay. Basically, she tells Jamie that she's pregnant when she when he's telling her about, you know, the condition that Danny has placed on them. Tells him that she's pregnant and fighting for this indication of I'm pregnant. Look, this is a disaster. This is one person we don't need being pregnant anymore. I don't even think she could get pregnant. How old is Cersei? I need to look into that. Not that it matters, but it's just, it does matter because I don't want her getting pregnant. Ugh. And then Jamie's like, who are you going to say the father is? And she's like, you. I'm tired of hiding. <laughs> I don't need people to find that out. You're being stupid, but whatever. It's her funeral. I'm just ready to see it. While they're hugging, she tells Jamie, never betray me again. Oh, God, sis, get it together. No one's betraying you, you psycho, psycho lady. So John, Davos, and Gendry meet up while they're getting ready for, you know, the taking of the, the dragon glass. Forge weapons with it, which is astounding. They're, they have a little back and forth for a second, which is cute, whatever, you know. And then John and all, all the rest of them ride out because we got to get ready to go beyond the wall and grab a white, I don't know if that's gonna work. Sure, we're gonna lose some people. Pretty sure of it, next episode. We're definitely gonna lose some people. It's gonna suck balls. I don't even wanna think about it. And then we get to Old Town and Gilly is read like in the middle of Samwell reading. Gilly's reading, which is cute. Couples that read together stay together. Gilly just happens to be reading in the book about an annulment being done, like how this maester keeps all sorts of records and um, there was an annulment done for the Prince Regar. <laughs> Regar, an annulment and a ceremony immediately right after the other, like back to back, like annulment happened and then a ceremony in the south in Dorne. Beautiful. Who did Rigar marry? Who did Rigar marry, I wonder? Or we all know? This is like a fanfic fucking episode. It's crazy. It's too much. Even I can say that. But we're enjoying it for what it is because it won't last. None of this happy stuff is going to last. So I'm going to enjoy it while I can. We should all do the same. Samuel just completely dismisses what she says. Like doesn't even seem to care and he's just like I'm ready to get out of here let's go packs he goes into the little secret area where he's not really allowed but he's now just like I don't give a fuck I'm gonna grab some books get the fuck out of here and that's what he does he says as they're leaving I'm tired of reading about the achievements of better men he's ready to be a better man whatever that means I wonder is he going back to the wall I don't know 
All right, so Arya spies. She's spying on little finger. He's doing his deals, doing his thing like he's always doing. So she's looking around corners and shit. Like, and I'm like, Arya, you're a fucking assassin, and you're making these weird mistakes. Honestly, it's weird that you just happen to be making these mistakes. But like, the maester gives him the scroll. And he's just like asking the maester, is this the only copy? And he's like, I believe so. Yeah, I thank you. And so he puts it in the room and Arya, making all this goddamn noise, getting inside the room, gets into the room and, and finds the scroll like in some cut in the bed and takes it and reads it. And basically it's the note that Sansa wrote um, that Cersei forced her to write that was seeing how their dad was trying to take um, the throne and um, he betrayed them he's a traitor and uh, Rob needs to uh, bend the knee <laughs> or bending of the knees to bend the knee um, and support you know their liege lord their king and all will be forgiven yeah. Sansa was so foolish then but you know Sansa wrote that under duress Cersei made her do it but still, Sansa was making a lot of mistakes. And for Arya to find that, I really hope that this doesn't feed into what Littlefinger wants them to do, which is create dissension within the, the family, which it looks like he's he's about to do. He's looking like he's succeeding, but I feel like there is more to this. And he is walking into a trap that Arya is setting possibly with Sansa by her side, who knows? Maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but I hope that little finger gets his ass handed to him, officially. We shall see, because he's a very smart guy, but I think Sansa might, I mean, not Sansa, Sansa too maybe, but Arya might have something up her sleeve, definitely, because she was making way too much noise for someone who was trained as an assassin, I'm sorry. John tries to get Tormund to go past the wall. It doesn't, you know, take much for him. He's down. Wildlings are always down, of course. And they see the Hound, Beric, and Thoros are in the cells below. They have a little argument about who did what to do and all this and that. And then they clear it out. And, you know, it's Hound was like, fuck all this, whatever. Are we doing this or not? Can we go? <laughs> Can we fucking go? Agreed. John agrees. And so they, uh, the gate lifts up. And here we go. Ace Watch episode 5 complete. All that storm and all that weather. I just said I was going to take too long. I feel like I took forever anyway. It's, you know, time for me to get the hell off. I have a long day tomorrow. But um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, continue to watch. Please hit the like button and subscribe at your leisure. And I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.